Uber everywhere. That's the vision of Silicon Valley's most powerful transportation company, literally. Over the last decade, Uber has courted customers and controversy in equal measure in its quest to replace the car in your driveway with a ride-sharing app. In 2017, the company completed 4 billion rides globally. And yes, it was once the subject of a platinum-selling rap single. Uber everywhere. Despite its growing ubiquity, Uber's financial future is far from certain. The money you pay every time you hail a ride has to be split between Uber's drivers, the company itself, and the cities where it operates. As things stand today, there's not nearly enough cash to go around. So let's break it down. How does Uber determine how much to charge you for those rides? And exactly how fair is your fare? Remember, your Uber fare can be divided into three different categories. First, there's the driver's cut. The biggest portion of every fare goes to the driver, who serves as the lifeblood of Uber's business. You could be CEO of your own car. For some perspective, Uber has just 16,000 full-time employees globally, but more than 3 million registered drivers. While employees receive perks like health benefits and steady pay, drivers are subject to the whims of Uber's pricing algorithms. And the company hasn't always had the best relationship with its most vital workers. We started with $20. When Uber calculates a fare, it takes into account time, distance, and customer demand. The upfront fare customers pay is actually just an estimate of the true cost of the trip, while drivers are paid based on the final mileage of the ride. So if a trip takes longer than Uber estimated, Uber pays the driver whatever the customer fare doesn't cover. If the trip is shorter than expected, Uber pockets the extra customer cash. Though Uber says its commission on fares averages out to around 25%, drivers are less certain. It's not cool at all, you need to get out of my car. Here's Harry Campbell, a longtime Uber driver and owner of the popular Rideshare Guy blog. So on some rides, they lose money. On most rides, they make money. And it's sort of like a betting algorithm is how the pricing works now. Their commission used to be 20 or 25 percent, but now that number is variable. And so that's what's causing a lot of pain and frustration for drivers, because on certain rides, the commission can be very high. Drivers have plenty of other reasons to be frustrated. Uber spent years aggressively slashing customer prices in order to attract new riders and ward off competition from Lyft. Driving the party, man. Oh, this a party, man? That's what's up. Uber Pool, the company's carpooling service, pays drivers slightly less per mile than UberX, and the explosion of available drivers has made finding rides more competitive. All I need to know is, do you have a car, a phone, and a face? According to a recent study, drivers on ride-sharing platforms saw their monthly earnings get cut in half between 2013 and 2018. Uber argues that low prices and features like Pool help keep drivers busy. The company insists hourly earnings have remained consistent over time. But Uber has also gone from telling drivers they could earn $90,000 a year to promoting the job as the ultimate side hustle instead. So, which one is it? A lot of these services are getting cheaper and cheaper for consumers, but I think for the driver's side, things have actually probably gotten a lot worse. If cheaper rides are hurting Uber drivers, how are they affecting the company itself? Let's dig a little deeper into the second category, Uber's cut. The truth is, no one really knows what Uber's cut actually is, but so far it hasn't been enough to build a profitable business. Uber burns through money unlike any other firm in Silicon Valley history. It reportedly lost nearly $11 billion in its first nine years of operation. And despite a one-time profit at the start of 2018 for selling its Southeast Asia business, the company was more than a billion dollars in the red in the third quarter. How can Uber rationalize spending so much cash? It's actually a pretty simple strategy. Start up, cash in, sell out, bro down. Venture capitalists and other large private investors have pumped a reported $17 billion of cash into Uber on the assumption that it will become the next Google or Amazon. The company still has $7 billion of that hoard on hand and has said that it will continue to chase growth rather than profits. That means luring more customers with discounted fares, roping in more drivers with lucrative bonuses, and spending half a billion dollars on a splashy ad campaign. Moving forward, it's time to move in a new direction. Uber plans to go public in 2019, but it doesn't plan to be profitable until 2021. The company's long-term plan is to squeeze more customers into Uber pools because they can generate more revenue than single passenger rides. But pools still comprise only 20% of Uber rides where they're available. And some riders will never want to be squeezed in with a bunch of strangers. You had people start in here. Right now, Uber is still trying to grow its ridership in order to justify its lofty valuation. But the strategy is creating other problems for cities. So let's see what they get out of all this in our final category, the city's cut. Some cities are now charging taxes on Uber and Lyft trips as their streets become swarmed with ride-hailing vehicles. In New York City, the number of registered Uber vehicles increased from 14,000 to 65,000 in just the last three years. And all those cars are spending more and more time cruising the streets alone in search of new passengers. 
It's a problem called deadheading, and it's grown significantly since 2013. Traffic speeds in Midtown Manhattan declined 15% between 2013 and 2017, with the growth of ride-sharing being a major reason. There are more cars on the road being used less efficiently than ever. That's the opposite of what ride-hailing was supposed to accomplish. That's just pros and cons. These factors led New York State Legislature to pass a new $2.75 congestion tax in March. That means every ride in an Uber or Lyft will have an extra fee added to help fund public transit starting in 2019. And in August, the city council voted to stop issuing new licenses to Uber and Lyft for a year as it studies the impact of ride hailing on city streets. These are some of the strictest regulations Uber has faced in the United States. But the problems in New York have also been documented in cities like Boston, Seattle, and Los Angeles, where people are now choosing to hop in an Uber instead of walk, bike, or use public transit. Uber has cast itself as a utopian solution to our transportation woes that could provide jobs for drivers, reduce traffic in cities, and help people get around affordably, all while building a profitable business. But there simply may not be enough money in that cheap Uber fare to solve all these problems. While the company says it wants to create a winning situation for riders, drivers, and cities, win, win, win. the road to achieving that goal will be a bumpy one.